Hello farmers, today I am going to the field to install the tank connections that will help me connect the main line and the drip line connections. I am going to use this old tank to serve as my storage for irrigation water. The first thing is to remove the original tap nipple to allow me to connect the one and a half inch nipple. This is not a new tank and since it was available, I decided to use it for this purpose. A helping hand and a pair of pipe wrench are used to do this. After you are done with the removing, it's now time to assemble the fittings to make the tank connection. I am using a thread seal or a teflon tape if you like on the male threads. You have to be generous with it. By the way, if you want to know the names of the various fittings being utilized here, I want to recommend that you watch my earlier pipes and fittings theory video. Most of these fittings do not require specialized tools. You just use your hands to fix them. This is a threaded ball cock that I will use to control water from the tank to the main line. A compression fitting adapter is also attached to provide the option of attaching the HDPE pipe. Now, a word of advice to new farmers. If you are doing this work, measure twice and cut once meaning that you have to be very sure before you cut the pipes to avoid any losses and ensure you cut the pipe in a perpendicular manner not slanted this ensures that the pipe edge sits squarely inside the compression fitting i realize some skills come with experience but just do your best and there you go the assembling part is done now i am going to use this extra gi nipple to make the hole on the tank ideally you should use a gi pipe piece of the same size to make the hole but i don't have one so i'm using the resources available to me once the piece is red hot then use a pair of pliers to hold it and then place it on the tank I know you may be wondering, how comes am I going too close to the edge of the tank while I had insisted on leaving some space on the edge? Well, the original tap nipple on this tank was already made by someone else who did not consider my preference, but it's all good. As I may have stated, you have to ensure the piece of the pipe is red hot before placing it on the tank else it will cool down before making its way through after you are successful with this procedure then you install the compression assembly that you assembled earlier some farmers also like to apply some plumber's paste on the joints around the back nuts to make the connection leak proof that's a good idea too this exercise also needs a helping hand as you will find out for you to fasten the back nuts, you use a pair of pipe wrench on both ends. I guess this is one of the few steps that require special tool to perform. After you are done, then it's time to place the tank on the platform. Some more extra hands are required here to place the tank squarely on the platform. There is this old proverb that goes like, a helping hand is welcomed except at the dining table. Crazy traditions. So, how high should your platform be? Well, that depends on many factors that require its own separate video. I am placing mine about one and a half meters from the mainline elevation level. From this point, you can now connect the necessary elbows and lock them.
use your creativity to ensure that the pipes lay flat where necessary. Now, when you are working with these pipes, ensure that you are careful that they don't make sharp beds, as the pipes will crack on the edge and leak. Sometimes as the pipes get warm from the sunlight, they become more soft and easy to work with. As I said earlier, you have to measure twice and cut once. I know there are many ways of doing these procedures, but I'm showing you how I do it in the farm. Is it the recommended way? Well, I don't know, but it works for my situation. So don't take my way as the only way. Why I feel that every crop farmer in Kenya needs to understand drip irrigation is because of the constant challenges of unpredictable weather. Installation may cost some money, but what if you lose your crop? The high cost of inputs should make every farmer be concerned about crop failure today. Irrigation will help a farmer to produce when the market is not flooded and fetch better prices. COVID-19 and the current fighting must have taught us about why we should not take stuff for granted. Yes, we can rant about fuel prices, but not food. We are in the tropics and we have land for production. Although I guess most of the productive land is now being subdivided left, right and center into plots. Poor planning. Today we have floods, tomorrow we have famine, all over. God has provided us with solutions to our challenges. If we look closely and invest wisely. I don't need to sound like a motivational speaker or an activist, but something needs to be done. At this point, I also like to do a stress test by allowing the water into the main line. Of course, you may be required to leave one end cap open to allow the air to vent from the main line, to allow water to fill the main line completely. Once the flow is smooth, then you lock the main line and inspect the joints for leaks. You take advantage of the static pressure to inspect for leaks. This is the layout of my vegetable garden. The beds will run perpendicular from the main line. The beds are 1 meter wide with a 30 centimeters footpath. I decided the distance between two drips on the same bed to be 40 centimeters and the distance from one drip line to the next on the adjacent bed to be three feet. I continue marking all these points for all the 10 beds. I would like you to visit my earlier drip lines and fittings video to understand what is being done in this part of the video. In that video, I am explaining in details the tools used and the general procedure of how I do it in the farm. There is a lot of background engineering maths and concepts required, and it's important for large-scale projects. In fact, if you ignore them, they can come back and bite you later. My little experience works for my vegetable garden. I doubt many farmers would be interested to understand Bernoulli's principle, friction tables, pressure calculations, vacuum relief valves, water hammer, and such stuff. But of course, you can contract a reputable irrigation company to do that for you. I think it's what the business guys call risk transfer. After I'm done installing the mini valves, it's time to use the drip line. This is the drip tip I will be using for this project. I have decided to use this djembe handle to make the installation easy. I have a friend to hold the drip tape roll by the handle as I pull the tape. This tape is sold in a thousand meter roll and it will be more than enough for my garden. My vegetable garden beds are 30 meters long and each bed will take a pair of these. By the way, I said why you shouldn't bend pipes. Even the drip tapes too. If you bend them, they leak at the edges. It is a good idea to use wooden sticks to restrain the main line. 
as you'll find out, when you align and tighten the drip lines, they tend to pull the main line along. Of course, this may not be a problem if the main line was buried underground. These sticks have to be closely spaced to avoid the pipe making sharp bends. Now, after you're done with the connections, it's time to flush the system. Flushing will help to remove any material like soil or plastic that may have been introduced while doing the installation. After 10 minutes, I install the plugs and you are good to go. Easier said than done, huh? But practice makes perfect. It's what they say. I install the drip tape with the emitters facing upwards. Why do I do this? In case there is any sediment in the water, like sand or silt, there will be less chance of blockage. That can be flushed out next time I do drip flushing. I hope you have learned something from this presentation. Remember to like, share and subscribe. You can also consider supporting my online work by using the link on the description of this video. Thank you for watching and God bless you.